Welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name is Tanner Bell and I am so excited to have you here tonight because we are going to teach an amazing, amazing class. And y'all, I'm fired up. Like, I just wanna put you on, on, on notice that I'm fired up tonight and that I am super, super excited to be here with you. And my promise for this maybe short, maybe long session is we are going to teach you um, four things to never do when selling your crafts. And the reason that I wanted to come on here is it's October, okay, my friends? It's October. We are gearing up for the holiday season. And there's so many of you that have said to me, Tanner, I want your help selling my crafts. I know I can sell my crafts, but I, you know, I have this thought or I have this issue that I cannot, um, work through. So today I want to go through four things to never do when selling your crafts. And a lot of these are going to address, I think a lot of people here that are struggling to get started. So if that's you, my friend, if you find yourself not able to get started um, selling your crafts, you are in the right place. And I'm super excited to spend the next few minutes with you. So let's dive in to number one. And the number one thing that you should never do when selling your crafts. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready? Cause I'm ready. <laughs> you should not let the term being oversaturated be the reason you don't bet on yourself. All right. This is like the number one thing I hear people tell me all the time is Tanner. It's saturated. It's saturated. I can't sell my crafts. It's saturated. And what I want to tell you, my friend, is that chances are, chances are here today, what's happened is that you have been the one to look around the internet and say, there's so many people selling crafts online. There's so many people selling their crafts online, right? Has that been you? Is that your thing holding you back that you're sitting here saying, oh my goodness, there's just so many people out there selling their crafts. There's not room for me. Do you know what that's actually doing, my friend? What I see actually happening when you tell me that is you're actually saying, you know what? I don't want to bet on myself. So what I want to allow you to do today is I want to allow you to have the thought, what would happen if I succeed? What would happen if I bet on myself? Y'all, at the end of the day, we can only control what we can control. So I'm not saying there might not be someone selling something similar to you in your town, but my town has 40,000 people living there. And if there's five people making t-shirts and selling them, guess what? There's room for you too. There's room for you too. Let's, okay, so if you're willing to say, you know, it's oversaturated, I'm not even going to do it. That's just looking at the worst case, right? That's just looking at the worst case. You have to give equal amount of time and consideration to the best case. Because if you fall somewhere in the middle, great, <laughs> right? Like if you, this is the worst case, and we normally only say that, if we switch our thoughts and go to the best case scenario, and we look at that over here, I mean, which one are, would you rather have, right? If it's a yes or no, I hope you would choose that you could be successful, that you know how to craft, and that people would enjoy having something you make. So that, that's something you can do right now is start switching that thought and then going for it, betting on yourself. We understand that we're not going to let uh, the thought that the market is oversaturated to keep us holding back from at least trying. All right. I would much rather you come to me and say, Tanner, I tried and I, you know, I, I tried and I don't like what I, the results I got then saying, you know what? It was too oversaturated. I, I'm just not trying it. All right. That's number one. Are you guys ready for number two? Number two is focusing on making a bunch of stuff before selling. Never. 
focus on making a bunch of stuff before you start selling, all right? I get to work with thousands of creatives building a business. So I know what you are thinking about and what you're struggling with probably more than you do. You probably are sitting there and you're thinking, how is Tanner inside my head? I've spent many years doing this work and I love it. I love, love, love getting to help people see what is possible for themselves in betting on themselves and building a business online through their crafts as a passion. And what happens when people come to me saying, Tanner, I just don't have enough stock. Debbie's saying that she needs more than 25 tumblers before she's even go put herself out there. And Debbie, sorry to put you on the spot, Debbie. Sorry, it just fits perfectly for this example. When you tell me that, I think you are more so scared to put yourself out there than doing what's comfortable for you, which is crafting, right? Crafting is comfort. Crafting in your craft room, you got your music playing, you're making these tumblers. If you're part of Maker University, here's your mug. You're making all these mugs, you're doing all the work, and you're just preparing to sell your crafts. Guess what? I don't think you should never do that. I would rather you take one tumbler that is amazing, right? Your best tumbler, and you sell that one. And what you're going to do is you're going to make your listing, you're going to put it out there on Etsy, you're going to put it out there on the Facebook, you're going to start telling your friends and family you can make tumblers, and you're going to see how that response is. Now, you might get a ton of orders. Then you're going to have to balance what to do. And I want to open it up to the possibility that you do get some orders. And what I would recommend is to say, hey, this is two or three weeks out. Two or three weeks, that's plenty of time for you to make those tumblers, right? There's no reason to make a bunch of things before you deem it successful or before there's a need, right? That's preparing for something that hasn't happened yet. And another thing that I want you all to be aware of just think about is that when you are out there and you're saying, I, I don't want to put myself out there. I'm afraid I'm going to get too many orders. I'm afraid I'm going to get too many orders. My friend, that's counterintuitive because until you put yourself out there, you're actually not going to get a single order. You're actually not going to get a single order. And what I want you to know is that if we could go back to that number one where we're going to bet on ourselves, guess what? If for some reason you were bombarded with orders, if I came to your doorstep and I said, hey, I need a hundred of your top selling product and I can, you know, I'm gonna pay full price. I'm not asking for a discount. I know for a fact that we're all creatives in this group, that we are all amazing people, that we're gonna figure out a way to do it. Whether we have to rush order supplies, whether we have to recruit our friends and family to help us fulfill the order, I think we could do it. I think we could do it. Do you all think you could do it? I think you could. I know you could because you are creatives and you're willing to figure it out. That's how, that's how we live our lives, like it's so good. So I love to say, just to put yourself out there locally, to put yourself out there on the Facebook and see what happens, just to start some traction. And then I recommend Etsy. I have a video coming out soon that talks all about what to do to get started with Etsy and why, um, I think Etsy is still great for beginners to start selling and it is so good. So are y'all ready for number three? Are you ready for number three? Number three, never do this when selling your crafts is do not people please. And what I mean from this is when I say do not 
be a people pleaser is I want you to make your decisions from a business standpoint, not from the standpoint of you as a person. I want you to limit your people pleasing to the business, right? Because there's a difference from being a people pleaser and having extraordinary customer service. And people get it confused so quickly, all right? So I don't want you to just bow down to every customer's request because you feel like you have to. I want you to I want to let you know it's okay to have a line in the sand. It's okay to have a boundary there. And more than that, I want you to agree to deadlines that are actually not going to hurt your quality. Okay? So if someone calls you tonight and say, hey, I need something by the end of day tomorrow, and you don't have that capacity, I want you to say no. Because a lot of you want to serve so many people, and I love that for you, and I think that's amazing, but if it comes at hurting your physical health, your mental health, like anything like that, your capacity to serve, if it hurts that, then you're not doing what you set out to do originally, right? You, you're not achieving that and you're sacrificing your quality, which means they may not reorder, they may not recommend you, and it really hurts you in the long run. So I want you to be okay with not people pleasing. Can we make that agreement? Can we, yes, it is okay to say no and say enough is enough. And I think number three and number four will complement each other. So get ready for that. Um, you guys are going to love it. Number four, there's a lot of people here that need to hear this. So you might be here and be like, this is why I'm here, right? Like there's a reason you're here. I truly believe it. Um, this is number four. And number four is don't price from scarcity, price from abundance. I'm going to say it again, and then we're going to dive in. Don't price from scarcity, price from abundance. All right, my friends, let's dive into that. So a lot of you here are saying, I'm scared to price too high. Um, I'm scared to price at all. I'm scared to value myself. All of these things very similar to number one, where you're saying, you know, the market is oversaturated, right? What those two things are telling me is that you are living life from scarcity. So if you're saying, if you're over here in this bucket where you're like, okay, there's too many people online, there's too many crafters selling their crafts, it's oversaturated. It's the same thing as over here where you're like, I'm scared they can't afford it. I'm scared that, you know, this is going to be too expensive. What you're really telling me is that you believe in scarcity. You're not living from abundance. And that can be so many different reasons why, but it's good to know. And it's good to call this out so that the next time you have that thought, you can say, whoa, I don't want to have that thought. We get to choose our thoughts. So if you are, can able to identify that's a scarcity thought, I'm, I don't have to claim that. I'm leaving that. I'm choosing abundance. So when you start thinking from abundance, you know that you can, you know, that you can actually sell your crafts online because there's people starting today and doing it. So there's abundance for this person and you can have abundance too. The same way over here. Let's look at, you know, I mean, Tiffany and Co. sells like a thousand dollar, like, pin or you know silly stuff silly silly stuff um it is it is crazy at the amount of abundance that is available in this world right so i know for a fact that you can price your t-shirt at thirty dollars instead of fifteen dollars right like have you ever had that thought where you're like okay the shirt's six dollars you know how much can i pay myself um, you know, this and that, and you are like, oh, 
but I really, it would be really great since I work so hard on like the pressing and like the design to pay myself 30, but nobody's gonna buy it at that, so I'm just gonna do 15. Have you ever had that thought? Because I have, I, I have been there. Um, and I, I want you to know that your price is actually going to kind of bring you the customer you want. And the customer you want, in my opinion, is the customer that is not looking for the cheapest. If you're looking for the cheapest, don't come to me. Like, right, like that's my mindset. If you're looking for the cheapest, don't compare, like j just don't. Like I, if you're, that, that's your only thought is the cheapest, we don't want those customers because they're just wanting to say, how much can you give me? Like how much can I take instead of how can I support your business and things like that, right? Like that's just not, um, that's just not feasible. So, all right, my friends, those are the four things to never do when selling your crafts.